Hello, so this is Tom. Welcome to another edition of Frequently Asked Questions Concerning Commercial Roofing, and I'm here with James. Hi, Tom. Hi. So today's question, we're going to talk about the chemical resistance of thermoplastic membranes. Okay, so chemical resistance, before we really get into the details of that and how different single-ply membranes uh, might, be, might perform, let's talk a little bit about the warranty situation, because that's, that's important. That's a good idea. So GAF doesn't imply any warranty from chemical attacks at all. And as a matter of fact, I don't think you'd find any manufacturer that would. No, that's right. There is not a manufacturer that would because of various factors that we're going to talk about a little bit later. But when most people ask me about chemical resistance and what should they, which membrane should they be using, what people are really talking about is the resistance of a membrane to oils and greases. So think about your restaurants. Okay, that makes sense food processing plants. You know, where food is handled and so there are greases and oils that get onto the roof. Mm -hmm. There could be uh, traps up on the roof that are leaking. And what I do is I, I steer people towards PVC key, okay. where greases and oils can get on. So they would provide a little bit more uh, assurance of long-term life using PVC key uh, than some of the other membranes. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So typically we would recommend some type of traps or mm -hmm sacrificial membranes or something that would right. protect your roof membrane. Right. Um, but, you know, things happen. And regular yes. maintenance could catch a small leak before it becomes a big problem mm -hmm. or that, something that's like correct. that. That's right. So we talked about restaurants, but the real question in my mind is mm -hmm. what about acids and bases and, you know, the mean stuff? So you're asking me that because I'm a chemist, I know. Absolutely. And uh, let's, let's talk about that. Now, each membrane behaves a little bit differently. Uh, okay. relative to those chemicals. So I think, James, we need to go through them kind of one, of a, one at a time. Through each one. All right, mm -hmm. well, let's start with TPO. So TPO is uh, mm -hmm. a really good membrane, uh, okay. performs really well mm -hmm. with heat and UV. Yeah. Um, as far as cost is concerned, it's probably the most cost-effective mm -hmm. membrane. Yeah, so good, tough membrane. Uh, definitely one of the longer-lasting uh, single-ply membranes that's out there. Well, okay. it seems really a, makes for a solid system. I don't, on the other hand, recommend this if you really are concerned with chemical attack on the roof. Okay. If you've really got a situation where chemicals are getting on the roof, which shouldn't really be happening if you've had good maintenance, good abatement systems on the roof, good traps, but if you are concerned, this is a membrane that you might not really want to consider. Okay. So let's talk about uh, PVC, Tom. So okay. PVC. Um, from an installer's point of view, it's really easy very to flexible. weld this because you can't overheat it. It's very mm -hmm. flexible. Mm -hmm. So really a gr another great sheet, single ply, welded seams, mm -hmm. another big advantage. This is slightly more chemical resistant than TPO, but not by a whole heck of a lot. Okay. So I wouldn't really recommend this strongly over TPO. A little bit better, but not enough that you could really notice. Okay. So it kind of feels like you're leading me toward the sheet with the probably the highest premium, the mm -hmm. PVC with the KE in it. Right. So in regular PVC, you have what's known as liquid plasticizers. Right. They leave over time. Uh, they can get uh, drawn out by some chemicals. Okay. Um, greases and oils will draw those those out. What KE gives you is better sort of long-term resistance towards embrittlement and uh, and cracking of the sheet. But it also gives you uh, much better chemical resistance than you're going to get from the other two. Chemicals okay. might still shorten the life of this, that's important to take note, but this is the more chemical resistant sheet to use. So the takeaway really is, if you're concerned about a chemical attack, this is the direction mm -hmm. you should head. Right. So are all KE membranes the same? Okay, another good question. Uh, no, what I do is I like to guide people towards using a sheet that has at least 25% KEE in it. Okay. So 25% or higher. Uh, some sheets that are out there are significantly lower than that. You need to stay away from those if you're concerned about chemical resistance. Okay, that makes sense. So mm -hmm. we're talking about polymers in these sheets, mm -hmm. the TPO and mm -hmm. the PVC. Is it really the polymer itself that's breaking down? Okay, good question. No, they're not. So they're not attacking the PVC, the TPO, or the KE. What they're doing is they're attacking the UV and the heat stabilizers that are in that sheet. Mm. And, and, and so the other thing that you need to be aware of is 
that the resistance really depends on, and the long-term performance, depends on where the roof really is. Okay. Is it in high altitude in the west where there's lots of heat and UV? Is it somewhere in the north where there's not so much? Is it somewhere in the south where there's a lot of heat and UV again? Right. So for these reasons, as manufacturers, we can't really predict how well a roofing membrane is going to do when you start talking about chemicals. Gotcha. Well, and we didn't even talk about concentration or mixing of chemicals, good, right? Good point, good point. Concentration, how long is it up there for? When was it caught that there was an issue and chemicals were on the roof? These are all variables that we can't control. And so I tell people who ask this question, make sure you involve an engineer, a consultant, and really look at your situation. Where is the building? What's really going on in the building? What are the maintenance programs, et cetera? Because the, the roofing material manufacturer can't at the end of the day reliably predict how these roofs are going to perform with chemicals. That makes sense. And would it be wise to actually test the specific chemicals? Oh, exactly. That should, that should okay. really be done. So now I've seen actual charts that give yes. you kind of an indication of, mm -hmm. of what you're looking at with the different membranes. So yes, if you go online and you Google this, you'll find any number of roofing manufacturers that have technical bulletins, guidelines, tables that show uh, the ranking of these different membranes with respect to different chemicals. Okay. But they're guidelines. Again, Just guidelines. Use them, use them cautiously. And uh, no implication of warranty no or anything else. Warranty. It's it, it is what it is, basically. It is what it is. Okay, so that's, that's really good to know. Um, Thank you, Tom, for answering the question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that's on many people's minds. Um, thank you for joining us and tune in again for another Frequently Asked Question. Absolutely. And commercial riffing. Thank you.